Okay, so I did a video recently on Raspberry Pi Connect, which is remote desktop access uh, on an official app in Raspberry Pi OS. And uh, I showed how to add a touchscreen keyboard so you can use it with tablets and smartphones. But we've actually had an update and this update is 1.2. And by the time you're watching this, it should be included in the normal update. And I'm gonna use it remotely as that's what it's for. So let's open a terminal and do sudo raspi-config and interface. And I'm gonna enable SSH because I wanna be able to start this without having to plug in a monitor and keyboard and everything. Right, so that's enabled. Let's hit finish. And I'm gonna shut this down. So now I can transfer this SD card into this Pi 5 and I'm just going to plug in a power cable and I'll leave it under my tally which is in the same room as the router so I'll get the best Wi-Fi performance. So let's log in on my MacBook. I open a terminal and let's go full screen and I know my IP address is 192.168.1.69. So SSH Lee PSP video at 192.168.1.69. So that's my IP address of my Pi. And you can see it's asking for the password. So let's pop that in. And if you wanted to know the IP address on your Pi, if you type in ifconfig base dash A, it comes up with loads of information, but the bit you need here, under wireless LAN, INET 192.168.1.69. So you can see that's what I've put in here, but I've also had to put SSH and Lee PSP video, and that's because my Pi is called Lee PSP video. And we can sign in from the command line, so if we type in rpi-connect sign in, and hit return, and we can open that in a browser. So let's sign in and view our dashboard, and you can see last seen one minute ago. And this is the bit that's different, so if we do connect via, and we do remote shell, and then we have terminal access. But if I close that down for now, I'll go on my iPad in a minute. Uh, we also have connect via screen sharing, which gives us a full screen interface. And this definitely likes to have uh, mouse and keyboard control. Uh, obviously, I have this uh, pop-up keyboard on here that I've added in a separate video, but I have full access to the Pi remotely from anywhere in the world. But let's disconnect from this because really it's the touchscreen control that I think is the, the big improvement. So I'll go over to my iPad and you may have noticed that the wallpaper changed when I use remote desktop. Uh, so when it was on my computer, it was like this. And that's because in testing, I plugged it into my TV and my HDMI, the first HDMI on my Pi doesn't work. That's why I've got an X next to it. So it's in the second one. So I'm gonna restart it and see what happens. So let's log in with Raspberry Pi Connect. You see it says Pi 5, because I've just saved a shortcut to the website. And I'm all signed in. So if I do connect via remote shell, so you can see I've got a terminal come up. If I tap on the screen, my iPad's on-screen keyboard comes up. So I can just type in reboot. So let's connect via screen sharing. Yeah, it still has the wrong desktop background. So if I tap on the files here, so one of these images in pictures uh, in this copilot folder, let's just check which one it is. So yeah, it was this one. So what's that one called? Uh, what 0164 right so let's change that because I quite like that so I'm going to right click on the desktop or press and hold on the desktop on a touchscreen device desktop preferences tap on the folder image go to pictures and open up that folder double tap work yeah and then 164 so let's hit open on that. And I've done some other customization um, which wasn't there. So I turned on dark mode, uh, but I also changed a few things. Um, the on-screen icons, I changed the color. 
and so if we go to desktop and text color yeah I changed it to like a light green uh, just because I thought it showed up better on that sky background there you go so now we've got that as our remote desktop background but this video was more about the changes uh, that are there so if I close that down and connect via remote shell so now you can see it's come up Lee PSP video at Raspberry Pi so this is terminal access remotely to my Pi so I can do things like update so sudo apt update and you can see I've only recently updated it so it's fine uh, I can also run things like NeoFetch just to check the status of things and let's lose the keyboard I'm not sure if HTOP works like this, I think it does, yeah. So HTOP will give me lots of information about my Pi that's running and this is all customizable. I just looked up impressive things you can use in terminal because I only use terminal if I have to uh, and when I'm updating and things like that sometimes it's just easier. And I'm just installing something called Bastet and let's see what that does. Okay, oh do I need a keyboard for this now? So back into terminal again and if we launch my Pi and to install it, it was sudo at install bastet but I've already installed it so I just need to type in bastet and then I have Tetris and you can see I'm using the keys now up and down so play harder version and as you can see, it's Tetris running in the terminal and it's working, it's pretty responsive actually. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't feel slow or laggy at all. I mean, it is Tetris. Okay, so let's have a look at all of the changes. Um, now this might be different with the official docs. This is obviously what I've been told early on in the stage. Uh, so command line access, you can now choose to connect to your device via command line which will give you a terminal in your web browser with access to your login shell. A new allow command line access option in the menu. The addition of RPI connect shell on and off commands to allow and disallow command line access via the CLI. RPI connect no longer has a hard dependency on Wave VNC, which is now a recommended dependency and can be opted out of by using apt install no install recommend and can be started without using a supported Wayland compositor and even works with Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Please note screen sharing and the GUI still only work with Raspberry Pi OS desktop and either Wayfire or LabWC. So great work by everybody involved. Hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.